magic spell you cast this is life Buddy, welcome to the Katizen Cup. I'm Boyle and I'm joined by Max today. Yep, hello, hello. <laughs> and we've got some exciting matches coming up. We've got some great teams coming in. Obviously, we had our qualifiers on Friday and we have our teams coming from that, which is TF Gaming, Ooga Booga, Bot Girls, Space Cat, Sexy and Anti Climax, joined by the invited teams, 1NE Esports and We Dem Doggle. Yeah, it's, um, you know, eight teams. They've all proven they're going to be here all, all across, you know, the Asia-Pacific region. So a lot of different play styles, a lot of familiar faces, actually, a couple new ones as well. And, you know, a fair bit of prize pool on the line looking at just over 100 US, I believe it was like 120 exactly. It's only going to the top two finishers, so every game is going to be important. That said, we are doing double elimination, so if a team slips up early, it will be fine for them. They will have that chance to bounce back. It's a double elimination, but I think it's those teams just that bit of a security in it, but being of the prize pool is obviously all crowdfunded, so I believe they can find much more prize pool or donate in the chat. I'm not 100 percent sure someone can put that in the chat, but you're able to donate there if you want to contribute to the prize pool and give these players more to play for, but we're gonna get into the match. But our first match of the day will be one in esports versus anti climax. Anti climax coming in as the bottom seed and then you coming in as the top one, so I'm expecting this to be an easy one for 1NE, but maybe Andy Climates can give them a bit of a challenge because we've not seen them on stream as of yet. Yeah, exactly. This is a new team, so I'm excited to see what they can bring out. Obviously, 1NE, they're coming into this one as the favorites. The common sense would say we should be looking at a 3-0, but it's Rocket League. Anything can happen, so I'm definitely not you know doubling down at least just yet anti-climax they did qualify so they they have some skills behind them probably a lot better than any of us casters do so i'm not downplaying them at all i just have to acknowledge the fact that as that eighth seed a lot of times you know you don't have expectations to go far yeah they were able to slip in we didn't see them on stream for the qualifiers as they were able to get six players for the lower bracket so including them and i believe it was if i get it right space cats were not seen on stream in the qualified room, we had We Them Doggo, Six is a good booger, what girls in TF Gaming. So not We Them Doggo. But Space Cat and Climax are unknown to really well, as casters and the viewers as well, and I guess you've known them before. So it'll be interesting to see them. We've not seen them before, so I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this one goes as well as we will be kicking off momentarily. Now it will be one NE esports on the blue side. Anticlimax will be orange in our opening match and series. Now these will be best of fives until we get to our grand final, which will be a best of seven. So a lot of Rocket League is actually gonna be played tonight. We have six series that we will be going through as we hit tack both the winners and the losers bracket. So it's definitely going to be a fun one in that regard. And I just have to say it like, you've, you've been watching the qualifiers a bit more. I think you're more on top of that. Is one and E, like are they really gonna be that team to beat from start to finish? Or do you see areas where they might be slipping out? One and E, they got um, invited to this tournament. This is along with We Them Doggles. So the qualifiers are won by TF Gaming, who will be seen later on in the bracket, presumably as they go far enough, which is expected. But One and E, they are obviously a strong team. Revar, LCT, and Chaotic, because three very big names. And the We Them Doggles side as well, who they're also invited with as Maru, Can One Realize, also like, huge names in the Asian scene. So one and E, we them doggo, they're gonna be the teams to beat. And if you can kind of you can take them down that you get some bragging rights there and you've got a good run to the grand finals, if I, I would say. Yeah, I mean we them doggo is actually the lineup that gets me the most excited. Uh realize also part of gaming gamers, a real playmaker. Morrow as well seems to come up big time and time again. So if I think if any team is going to take down the other invitee one and E, it would be we them doggos, but even if they were to play, we probably wouldn't see them until that winner's final. So that's just sort of that dream matchup that will be coming up later as we are still waiting to get into our opening match. Now, this is technically in the quarterfinal bracket, as mentioned before. Eight teams were competing, so it's all about getting to that grand final if you want any of that prize pool. So to even make it there, you have to win at least three series, if not more, if you drop one. So definitely going to be a long night for those who do make that distance. And I'm excited to get into it. It's like, I just want to get this long night started because it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I think we can set our players off. Over in the one any side, we do have K 
chaotic LCT and Rapupi. And over on the anticlimax side, we have, I get this right, it is Jazzin, Hazy, and Red. So, if we can send our players off and get things going, I think we're ready. Yeah, I think we should be ready to go. So, the kickoff will be happening momentarily everyone in the chat if you have a dog in this race besides we dem doggos i mean go ahead and throw that support i want to see what the chat feels we've each said our prediction we're each believing one and you're going to take this but the matches are still to be played as we are about to kick us off first kick off of the tournament goes heavily in favor of one and yeah a great kick off to start things off and Set the tone, but just gonna see what it's about at the moment. Just get used to each other's gameplay, get into the tournament, get into the swing of things, play around, find the weaknesses of their opponents as LCT. He's gonna take it off himself. Air dribble, flop around the field, does what he wants with it. The ball goes centre from Chaotic, starts for the corner. He gets cleared away. Now has it on the follow up. Oh. Oh. Raponi, he's going to try and punch this through the middle. The Jazzin is there to contest, at least momentarily. It was a pass up to Ride, so unfortunately he couldn't catch it. And I've noticed that already coming from Anti Climax. They're trying to set up these aerial plays, but they haven't been able to follow through just because of mistakes mechanically. Meanwhile, on the other side, 1NE, they are keeping two members back. They definitely don't want that counter attack to strike as Ride almost rides the ball from the mid pitch to the goal, but is stopped at the last second by Quebec Chaos. And then either that. A kind of aggressive team at times, so they want to have that kind of security at the back and hold someone back and they don't want to risk it, which is a good way to start off. They don't want to have that opening goal scored on them, which is what could be happening right now. Chaotic does make it back in time, and it's only mean no, no, but that could have been the opening goal right there if it wasn't fast enough. But the pass out to the poopy, he couldn't find a touch on it, the ball sends to the corner. Yeah, Chaotic's still on the ball trying to find a pass. Oh, he got LCT, but. I want to jump in here and just point out, like, these pass plays, the setups from both teams are so good, just they've been unable to execute, and a large part of that is actually how passive these teams are playing. No one is pressing up and challenging the setups of these passes, so eventually something is going to follow through right here, unless either that means a defender stepping up, getting that intercept, and getting that counterattack, or a pass play will be successful, and I feel like 1NE have gotten closer, and they're the team that I think is going to get it, possibly right now. They're looking closer, they're being a bit more aggressive, and they're getting these more scary attacks, but Andy Climax doesn't have a really good job at holding on at the moment. We're probably going to try and ban the ball up field to LCT. He gets a touch out to the side, and this could be a possible play for Chaotic. He's going to take it off the ceiling, try and follow up. Not enough boost to do so, and that's an easy clear for Andy Climax. And if he keeps getting these clears, they're going to keep shutting down one NE. LCT is up for it, dropping off the backboard. That could be a finish for Chaotic no! off the dunk, off the shot. No! Jasmine, what a save, LCT. He gets a shot. He finally finishes as the first goal of the tournament. Yeah, finally we get one in. Chaotic, he was so close to doing it himself, but credit where credit is due. Jazzin, he could only make so many miraculous saves. It was three, but eventually that fourth rotation was enough to punch it in. And I have to question, where was Ridge? Where was Hassim? They, he needed help right there, but unfortunately the other two defenders were missing on their rotation and just left it all to Jazzin and what Benz will eventually bring. Jazzin was just stuck in the net by himself. No one there to help him. He Done the best they could, he would get two amazing saves, but it just wasn't nowhere near enough. And one well, in the air shoot, and they're going to take him any shots they needed to get a goal. The ball goes center, they're going to take him in a second. And it is clearly by Jazzin, and counter attack could come underway as Hazy gets a touch into the corner, trying to follow up, but once again, clearly by the poopy. Reds get the dunk on, goes straight into his corner, and now anti climax are stuck in the back line at the moment. It's trying to, they're struggling to get out of their own half, but a good touch will put them out for a minute, and get Hazy some time to catch up. He gets the ball center, but an easy clear once more, no follow up, and the team just not knowing where to be in the field right now to take down and, and get a goal on the one and e side. I mean, it was a strong defensive rotation from one and e. Like, that was a long situation right there for Anti Climax trying to send something out of the corner, but one and e, they were rotating well too cleanly and winning every single challenge. And as a result, they get a counter attack right now. Repenny, he almost had the shot, but doesn't quite connect. Now we have a chance for Ritz to clear it over the middle. It'll be caught by Jensen, who redirects it. Gets that oh, last Jensen. shot, and we are tied. What a goal that was! A great touch to drop down from Redson. What was that finish? It was such a quick recovery. Chaotic couldn't make it in time, and we're all equalised. One and E, they're getting challenged big time right now by Anti Climax. Yeah, absolutely, and we finally saw the pass play come through. That was something that each of these teams were trying to establish. One and E, they did give it up once they got that attacking rotation through, but Anti Climax, they go back to the pass play, and it pays off in dividends. We're tied a minute 30 to go, and I'll tell you what, if Anti Climax can take this first game, that is a statement against a team that kind of auto-qualified and was invited to be. 
to Climax, they are proving their worth right now and I've got to be honest, I didn't expect much from them because of just being that sixth, well that eighth seed team and one and e being such a good team and such a strong team over time. I expect them to run away with this, but anti climax. They are here to win. They want to show how good they are and they can take them one and e. That's exactly what they're doing. We're all tied up. That's off the backboard. Can it be finished? No, no one's gonna follow up. That could have been a chance for Reds. He comes in now, but it's a too little too late, they're all gonna be cleared away. As we're seeing the prices, though, I do have to point out that was actually a pretty big misplay by Ridge right there. Now, I definitely think Jazzin is here to play as he flicks it over one right there and nearly gets the shot, but Ridge was not spacing at all, and as a result, that attack kind of diminished. It gave enough time for 1NE to sort of get back on defense, and LCT over the top, puts on the shot, it's off that top crossbar. It goes high, and still in the anticlimax half. Chaotic with the shot, it just goes wide, and LCT finish, yes, he can, no, he can, Jazzin! He he comes out of nowhere and finds a save. We still would have made 1 1, but the shot comes out from Chaotic. He's it, he's it, a finish. Oh, no one so in that close. corner. That's where they needed to be. I think Five they could be getting a first overtime. Yeah, of course, overtime we, we can start off in overtime. Game right? number one. Like, that's what you have to do. Start us off in an overtime, really set the marker. That's an awkward pinch from Gazin, or is it? They're gonna try and set something up. Raponi trying to put it down, rides, throws it back in front of the goal. LCD catches it, but can't hold on, and we do have our first overtime. What a first game this has been for Anticlimax. They have gave it their all, and they're all was, well, challenging for one any one and you're struggling. The ball goes center, they drop down in front of the net, no one to finish. Chaos are gonna clear it away. Gazin, not the best of touches there. This is a risky play. LCT's up for it, he couldn't get the touch. Hazy there waiting back, and he's gonna take the ball out of his own half. Gets a pass for Puppy, can he get past Chaotic? No, he can't, the ball drops down. Red, he in the time for Mark Field, Puppy's there first. Jazz needs it back and finds a save, and the hold down to Climax say they're making all the saves they need at the moment. Eight saves between them. Make that nine oh, is off the trouble. crossbar. That's another save! How are they still alive? They're so, so good in defense at the moment. I, I, it's just Jazzin. He is able to hold the fort time and time again, and he just needs a little more help from his team, and I really do believe that Anticlimax can take this. One and E, they just haven't had that answer. They keep trying to go straight down the middle, and that is not going to work. They need to go back to that pass play they were trying to set up before. Chaotic, he's going to try and take it out the corner now. He is going for that solo play, but again, the double commit for no reason, unfortunately, coming out of one and E, and now balls back in Jazz's possession, but finally he is challenged, loses out, got dunked on LCT with a demo as well. However, no one's there to follow through, or are they? Chaotix putting it in the corner. This could be the chance. Jazzin, actually not a very good clear. It's back in the corner, and now one and E, they can establish a decent attack. Put up through by Rez, but quickly shot down by Chaotic. Casey does come in, gets a touch on the LCT, hit there to the side. Rapufi, he couldn't find it, gets some time for the anticlimax side to be cooked. But LCT, a great launch up field, doesn't have to get this touch out of the side. And ball well, took towards the net once more. Chaotic, can he finish? No, he hits it high, rises the net, he gets it away, and they're hanging on with the skin of their teeth right now, anticlimax. But so many great saves is really what's keeping them into this. Yeah, exactly. Ribs finally has a great save, but he lets that one by, nearly goes in. Rapui almost gets one on the backside as well. Ribs has to actually go cross pitch in order to look for the clear. LCT though catches it before it goes mid. Two cards go up, three cards go up. The double commit does not ring true, and it's back on the defense for anti-climax. That's a great juke by Rapui. He's going to pass it to Chaotic. He takes the shot, he takes the goal, and that is game one going to 1NE. What a shot in Rapui. He gets the outplay, he gets the pass, an excellent shot from Chaotic, just slips under the crossbar. That's 2 one to one any first game. But anti-climax, they put up some fight, they can't be disappointed for that first game. If they can keep that up, one any you need to worry. I mean, they finally went back to that pass play and it did pay off, and that's what gets them through in that overtime. I mean, Jazzin can only be in so many places on the pitch at one time. Yes, Ridge and Hassif, they did have a couple key moments, but the consistency was not at that same level as Jazzin, who was, I think, almost a little too reliant on individual plays, and I'm looking for the rest of Anticlimax to step up and rise themselves to Jazzin's level as we move forward. For 1NE, though, I mean, keep doing what they're doing, and I think they will pay off. I definitely feel Rapupi has the ability to sort of match with Jazzin. He's kind of been the one who's been stepping up to challenge him, for better or worse sometimes, but when we're looking at consistent play and rotations and who's been the stronger team, I still feel it is one in e They just have to find a way to mitigate the damage Jazzin is doing on an individual level. If you just look at how the shot counter here is available, one in e 16 shots to three is 
well, they had that dominance. It was just the anti climax defense, which was so, so good. All these last minute saves and all these great, great clears away. But in the end, they're only getting three shots on target. They needed two goals to tie it up. Mm. They're just not going to get those kind of goals with that little shot. So, whereas one any, they're taking 16 shots and only finding two goals from it. It's a testament to anti climax defense. But yeah, they haven't been able to get the clear though, like because they're so reliant on Jazzin to make that individual play to get it past mid pitch. Until someone else can step up and follow through, if Jazzin loses that first challenge, if Riz or Hasmith can then get that next bag and crack it back onto the blue side of the pitch, maybe we can see more of what this orange side can do on attack. And that's just what we've been lacking so far. Maybe it involves going back to the aerial play. I know it wasn't successful for the first minute in game one, but that could be the answer for one of these teams. Could be the answer in David the Pippi. Gonna try and find an early goal off the corner of the pass to LCT. LCT, he hits the crossbar. That could have been the opening goal of this game, but just goes high. Now Jazz going for the dribble himself. Can't get the pass. Chaos it with a 15. It's up to LCT now. He's up for the ball. Takes it to the backboard himself. Tries to win the touch. The ball cleared away to Chaotic. Off the side wall now. Gonna try and follow up. Off the bat, whoa, this is whoa. all one in here at the moment. Jazzy gets saved. And another bit LCT, he just forces it in there. That was his goal no matter what. I thought for a small, small moment we were going to see an own goal from Hasmith. Instead, he did position himself behind, but too much power coming from LCT to bang it right through the middle. Now, Jazzin did that hero's play. He held it for as long as possible. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Now, again, I don't want to come down too harsh on some of these players, but I'm watching Rids. I'm watching his positioning, and he's doing a lot of tailgating as Rapupi going for that style play. Almost gets it through. Jazzin finally, though, gets that clear that anti-climax was looking for. Getting the clear, but it's going to be a quick counter-attack as Chaos gets the ball up field. Rez does turn that back, and a good pass to Hayes, eh? He can't finish it, though, as LCT comes out to find that save. Because Will lies to Rez once more. He passes the ball centre. Jazz, and he's not close enough to find it, and Chaos is going to hit the ball high. Up to LCT, the ball drops down. Chaos with a shot. Hayes finds a save, but once again, they're stuck in the back lane at the moment. They're struggling to get out. They're struggling to get things going. They're struggling to attack that one any side. Yeah, I mean, one and e, they're keeping two people at mid-pitch, and they're really sort of shutting down any boost. It has to be a kind of cheeky play like that from Rice to get us through. Now, Jazzin has a chance to follow up, but he is falling back on defense, but LCT losing possession does mean Jazzin can take it through the middle. It's put up to Hasmith. Everyone's missing the ball in midair as Chaotic is going to go ahead and lob it right on back. LCT with that last touch cannot get it past Ridge. A good stop right there, but the next shot will come from Chaotic. Ridge going back up again gets it to the corner where things are a little bit safe. He hits the ball high, gonna try and follow up, but LCT is there first, the ball gonna drop down. Red's not the best of touch here, he does get it away in the pass to Hazy, he's gonna clear it upfield, but straight to LCT and straight back to the corner of the ball goes, LCT on the ball. And they try and get it centre, couldn't mind that second touch, clear away by Jazzin. Counter attack opportunity is here as a puppy. Not the best of 50s, and a team, no, not, sorry, not a team, I'm on Jazzin, shut down that play, the ball goes centre, LCT's pushed up too far and just sitting in the middle at the moment. That's boom up field from Hazy, this could be an opportunity, he can't get beat out Chaotic though, and 1NE they're still surviving, only one shot for anti climax so far, 6 for 1NE, and it's looks very familiar to game number 1. It is, it is, I mean 1NE they're doing what worked for them last time, and that was just a strong mid-pitch play, just don't let their opponents get it past there, let them try to rely on an individual play, and then just rely on good defense rotations, what a pitch dunk, Rids out of nowhere ties this game. What was that, Reds? He just... He's like, Chaos is going to go for this ball. I'm going to make him score himself. He goes for the 50. And it is pinched into the net. That's 1-1. The defenders couldn't see it coming. The speed on that one was too much to handle. 142 kilometers per hour. We're all tied up once again. And the climax, they're doing so, so well. I mean, I don't think anyone can expect, you know, a 142 missile coming at ground level off of an awkward pinch like that. I, it looked like a weird mix of a ground pinch as well as bouncing off one and E's car. Just a bit of a shocker right there. And now we might see some more aggression actually coming from this blue side. They can't afford to sit back and play that midfield defense. And we're seeing the setup already from LCT. He's going to drop it in front of the goal. Can't get that last touch for Poopy. Went for it as well. Now Jazzin, open net. It's one defender in the way. He goes for the flick but loses possession. Gets the demo instead so the attack can contain. And it's with a shot. He'll get it in. And it's 2-1 to one in favor of the anti-climax. To climb that, they got a really great demo comes out to eliminate that last defender. He couldn't score off the dribble, but Rez is a fence with a touch from Hazy, and we're two to one chance to climax. They're in the lead. One and e. This is not looking good for them. They are struggling anti climax, so they are showing up big time.
They absolutely are. I mean, this is so much better play than I was expecting out of the bottom seeded team right now. And Jazzin, I feel like, has been the true MVP of this game thus far. As Half-Life actually does enough to disrupt the chaotic attack down the middle. Jazzin will instead try to punch it through. I'm still not riding one any off yet. As you can see, they're already back on the offensive side of the pitch. They just can't afford to get too aggressive and kind of get caught on the back foot like we saw previously. That's true, that is it. The anticlimax defense is standing so strong that they need to take some better shots here. They're taking many shots, but they've not been the most of challenging to save as well, we've seen anticlimax. They've had so many saves game in, game out, and when any, they've had none. They've anticlimax took two shots in total. When any have took a total of nine already, and well, sorry, anticlimax took a total of two, yeah, and when he took a total of yeah. nine. And well, <laughs> anticlimax in the lead two to one. When any, the shots aren't, they're not clinical at finishing. I mean, and that's just representative of how aggressive sometimes one and he can get as once again they are punished by sending too many people deep. Hasmith is able to find that third goal and with less than a minute to go, it looks like we might be having a proper series on our hands. Anticlimax, the they're two goals up, 50 seconds left. This could be their game right now, time this is up one to one. One and he, they cannot break through this defense, Anticlimax are doing so, so well. And every attack they go on, they're finding a goal from it. He's going to try and get it off the bat, but it's an easy push for Hazy. Going out to the proof of chaotic, he's going to try and push it, but Dazzins are first. He's going to take the ball up field. Just hold on for 30 more seconds and they take this game. If he get a touch off the backboard and find the pass to the pussy, the ball drops out in the pussy. Taking the ball up field, not enough boost to follow, and LCT gets beat by Reds. Oh. And only 20 seconds left. I'm pretty sure this is it for one and E. They're not going to take this game now. There's just not enough time. He has it onto the ball up field. The LCT hits it off the side wall. So the back wall. And that's it. Only 10 seconds left. They're not going to score two goals in time. Anti climax. They're going to tie up the series. Yeah, it looks like we have a proper series. That's one more cheeky goal from Hasmith. Uh, at the very end right there, as everyone from 1NE was pushing forward, trying to be aggressive. And LCT really was the one who kind of over-rotated and left that exposed net. Something I did like from 1NE, though, during that extended exchange was they are starting to look for bumps now. And that's something neither of these teams have done. Particularly, they were trying to bump Jazz, and I believe it was uh, Chaotic who was going for it. And that's perhaps the strategy that they're going to need to adapt moving forward, as this game will come to an end, 4-1, to possibly even 5-1 to at this stage with, you know, tied one all across the series and definitely anti-climax. This is a fun team to watch between miraculous saves and crazy breakaway goals. I, I'm definitely enjoying this orange side. I am loving this game at the moment. They're just looking so, so good and they're challenging one and these so, so greatly in ways I did not expect. The only goal scored on anti-climax was that pretty much the push in from LCT where the defenders were there, but they just didn't do enough. And other than that, all those shots from 1NE went completely to waste. Nine shots to four, and 1NE, they're losing that game four to one. Anticlimax, 100% shooting record there. They didn't miss a single shot. Again, and that just came from, you know, picking their moments. They were waiting till there was gaps in 1E's, like, offensive rotations, and they just capitalized on it. Or, match that one goal, which we kind of just saw in the background of the replay right there, where Rids was able to kind of find an avenue along the side. Fantastic performance, and what I find interesting, and maybe this is a little bit of my own fault, like, the man who was sort of, I suppose, the carry in that first game, he wasn't even scoring the goals. The goals were actually coming from Hasmith as well as Rids moving forward. Jazzin was kind of being that, you know, defensive rock setting up the pass plays in certain situations, and anti-climax. I said they all had to rise up to Jazzin's level. Well, in game number two, they did, and they got a win as a result. They've done a great job there with their whole kind of attack and play and a great job but you have to remake the server it does go down for maintenance but thank you psionics but a quick shout out over to me get it right lolo max putting ten dollars into the prize pool that puts up to 125 dollars so be sure you can put in it's much more prize pool in the chat and you're welcome to donate yourself help out these players and give them something more to work for yeah, this does give us a chance though to sit back, relax a bit as we get ready for game number three and sort of break down what we've been seeing with these first two games because 1 and E, I definitely feel, are playing a bit more traditional Rocket League. Like, they're having, you know, pretty solid mid-pitch rotations, but it's been individual plays coming from Anticlimax, uh, in a sense, where they're trying to, you know, solo punch it through that mid-pitch. You know, I'm going to outplay you, and then we're going to find this breakaway. And if you're 1 and E, do you 
fall back onto mechanical laurels and actually try to match those 1v1s? Or do you keep doing with, I guess, as opposed to that more traditional Rocket League play, maybe get more aggressive for the demos? Like, which sort of approach do you think they should be adapting moving forward? On an E, they are very aggressive team. and We've seen this game in game out that they're getting more shots, but I think the demos probably is the way to go, is the defense hmm. of anti what stands strong. That's, they're constantly getting these saves and shutting down these plays, whereas on an E, they didn't find a single save that last game, and Andy Clamps only needed four shots to win it. And he had nine, and he scored one goal. Obviously, something's not going right here where they're shooting. I think it, it came back to how they played the first half of that second game, where they were keeping two people mid-pitch. They weren't over-committing. They were boost-starving their opponents. But then the second things got tied, it's like they went super aggressive with like their plays, and they were trying to force things to happen, and they got punished time and time again. It's why I feel like one and E just... Keep it calm, keep your mid-pitch play, keep boost starving, and don't give them that opportunity to go for those like 1v1 sort of pressing plays, and you should be fine. I, I think it was just a case of 1 and E had a small mental boom, and you know, credit where credit is due, Anticlimax capitalized on it time and time again. The second there was an open goal, guess what? They were going to attack and they were going to hit it. And I think if 1 and E falls back onto the laurels, uh, plays that more intelligent game that we saw for the first game and a half, they probably will take this series. That said, you never know, they have to bounce back first, and they did get throttled pretty hard the second half of game number two, so it's going to be a quick game of redemption, I feel, for the number one seed in one and e Will they be able to bring it back? The cars are back on the pitch, and we are here for game number three in our opening winner's quarterfinal series. Hey, number three, the winner of this will take the lead in the series and make this help at match point, so it's a very important game for both of these teams at the moment, is right now. Really, if Anti Climax win this, it'll be a, a disappointing loss for one and E, but a great win for Anti Climax is coming in this eighth seed, beating that number one seed in the first round is nothing but amazing. But we are only in game number three now, they have to prove a little bit more to it as one and E. They have so much pedigree in their team, they've had so much experience, I'm not seeing much for Anti Climax, but I am hoping to see a lot come out from them this game. Yeah, again, like Anticlimax, they're already going back to, you know, what sort of work for them before, or are they? With three people in the box, Chaotic is able to go over the top and find the first goal in Game 3. Chaotic, he does not want to lose this series. A great pass on the Pufi under the cross, but the ball slips in, and on an eagle one off the first 30 seconds, and this is the start one and he won. They want to have the lead so they can just hold off, get more goals, extending that lead, but just keep Anticlimax at bay, get the hell lead, and just, if they can just be solid, that's a good start. Off the crossbar though, Riz couldn't finish. And that could have been equalizer there. Jasmine, he hits it wide. But it's still a dangerous position for one and need. A good clue from LCT though, eliminates that. And they put the Kupi on the attack. Off the back wall, couldn't find a teammate. He also gonna hit it into the corner. Couldn't find a teammate either, it's hazy. And they get a small touch out of the corner. <laughs> oh, Jasmine. Oh, Very what hard. a intercept. That was beautiful, Jasmine. He was trying to get a little too tricky with his slowing the pace out right there. And LCT is like, yoink, I'll just use that for a backboard pass. Rapupi on the backside. And that is the sort of punishment that I wanted to see from 1NE after game number two. Beautiful play. And 1NE definitely putting a stomp on their opponents with that goal right there. 1NE, they just came in and shut that down. There wasn't the best of touches. And LCT, you can hit the ball high. Almost going their own goal there, but it does hit the it does hit the backboard. They try and clear it away and find another Rapupi, a good boom upfield. Jasmine's waiting back. He gets the touch, gets it past Chaotic, but he's all over the place right now. Hazy has to come in, he's on the dribble. He couldn't get it past, though. He couldn't get it past LCT, though. The ball goes back to into Climax half once again. Jasmine's up. Rapupi's there, though. He takes the shot, gets it away, but that could be another shot coming in. LCT comes in. Hazy's there, he clears it away. LCT has to rush back. He gets bumped in the process. He is able to cover, and oh, Rezzy went for the dunk, but could not find it. Yeah, Ritz had a chance, and here comes the punish shot. Chaotic shooting a missile straight down the middle. Not past power enough. Team players running into each other. Anti-climax. They left an open net from bad communication right there. Ritz and Hasmith collided in the box. Fortunately, they're not punished just yet, but the attack will be sustained as a result. LCT went for the double touch. Doesn't get that second one. Hasmith, that's a very weak clear attempt. It goes right back into Ritz's lap after the shot for Rapupi isn't quite hit hard enough. And Again, a couple bullets dodged really for this orange side, but can they dodge the third one? Chaotix is not a chance. Third time's a charm, and that is the 3-0 score. This is exactly what we're expecting from 1NE. They're finally getting into it, and they're finally able to score their shots. Six shots, six shots, three goal. This is so much better. They've got the 3-0 up. 
anti climbers are completely out of it now. They cannot shut these attacks down. They're just having to try and return, but one of the are doing such a good job at defending that that's not happening either. They're free or what? Half the game left to go. And they're just looking like a completely different team. Now that's going to be a fourth as... Oh, it's a sad way to go, but Hazy, he has in Hazy on the of the crossbar, but I wouldn't try to that one in anyway with the shot from Chaotic. Chaotic is just the fastest car on the pitch right now. He is everywhere. He's taking the boots and he's putting them to use. Case in point right there. And this is the one any I was expecting to see at the start of the day, just being that faster, more mechanically skilled team. This is that aggressive attack that I think they just weren't really connecting on during the first two minutes of the first game, but they've hit their groove now, and this is looking pretty dire for anti-climax. I mean, I don't see them coming back in this game. Granted, there's still two minutes left, but just kick it out. So, nice little flip over one. LCT actually was coming across for the pinch attempt, but it was disrupted by Hasman. Still, though, they're going for stylish plays. They're going into their groove. They feel comfortable. It's obvious by how they're playing, and that could be a very bad side for anti-climax. That's it indeed, there's a 4 0 down in game number three, and even with that momentum of winning game number two, and like how close game number one was, they still can you know, challenge one of the momentum is probably their best friend at the moment, but it's just not doing anything for them. One and E, they've really got into this series now, and they've realized we might lose this. We do not want to lose this. We need to bring our A game, and that's exactly what they're doing now. They're bringing it all in game number three, and just destroying anti climax, destroying their hopes at the moment. They're taking down one and E. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's unfortunate to see if you're a fan of anti-climax. They do find one off of a demo play, so there you go. Rids, nice little, nice little setup right there. Just want to see more of that probably as we move to game four. I mean, that was a beautiful demo, really set up perfectly for Jazzin, who does get his goal. Maybe we're speaking too soon. A minute 24 remaining, a couple more plays like that, and we might have a, um, a comeback on our hands. Possibly, but I do have my doubts, unfortunately. We do only have a minute left, and three goals needed, and one and E, they've been doing so well at the shutdown plays. They've not made any saves, they don't have to, as Dante Clements have only had two shots on target. And that's what they've been doing, they've been doing so well in the midfield that they shut down every play. That's a good touch on the poor play, but it doesn't take out any defenders. Resident is trying to take it out of field, but it's not the best of touch, and now it's hazy on the ball, hits it to the side wall. Resident is trying to follow up, beat our LCT, the ball cleared away, and it was starts on the ball. But with 55 seconds left, the goal really oh. would be needed, right? Go for this play, but it's hesitant to say by you have, you have to make those. That has to be connected on Hasmith, unfortunately, by missing. That may have actually cost this game. That says Brids, he's going for that solo push. Unfortunately, he got bumped and taken off the ball. Chaotic, though, does lose it. LCT is there to back him up, and here comes an attack from 1NE. 30 seconds remaining, a goal every 10 seconds. Ball on the orange side of the pitch, as LCT puts a shot on target. Jazzin was there. This counterattack has to be good. It's disrupted by Rapupi. The follow-up shot from Riz does not connect as he misses completely. And that should do it in this one, despite Jazzin knocking it off that crossbar. Well, he doesn't even find the point regardless. 4-1 went to win. I mean, guess they can find a goal off of this attack. But either way, they're going to win this game number three in dominating fashion and put themselves 2-1 up in the series. First one went to overtime. Second was 4-1 to anti-climax. This time it's 4-1 for 1-NE one and an anti-climax. They've got a lot of work to do in this game, number four, if they want to bring this back, is one and E. They're in their stride now, they're ready to win. Yeah. I mean, we saw that aggressive play from the first game, but this time, you know, it actually connecting. Uh, something that I'm noticing as kind of a weakness of anti-climax is they don't really use the backboard or the wall defensively. All of their defensive plays comes from the box, and we saw one and E actually capitalize and exploit it a couple times in that game, and... I'm not sure if it's a case of the players not feeling comfortable to play the backboard defensively, or it might not just be at that skill set level yet, but it's something that I think they should invest some time to practice and maybe, you know, go for it a bit more in these upcoming games because it gives that extra element to perhaps find another way to break through this offensive rotation of 1NE. Uh, playing the backboard is super important, especially as we get later and later into this tournament, and it's something that I need to see out of the anti-climax gameplay uh, if they're going to bring this series back. Anti Climax can bring the series back, they need to take more shots. They've been winning games with so little shots, and that is impressive to see. But they can't always do that. When they are going to start shutting things down, shutting down these plays, shutting down these shots, and Anti Climax need to take more if they want to challenge us to stay in a victory with only getting the three or four shots a game, where when they need to get about nine to 13 shots per game, there's just a complete difference here.
Yeah, I mean, it's just been, unfortunately, anticlimax and inability to punch it past that mid-pitch. It's not really... It, they're making these defensive saves, but they're not putting it in places where they can clear. And if you're one of me, it's like, that's fine. Not every shot has to go through as long as we can keep the offensive pressure on. They're content to play that style of game, especially when they're ahead. And it, it's one of the things that's so hard to deal with when you're behind us. We have already kicked off into game number four. Once again, the kickoff going in favor of one and e. The ball is set for the pass. LCT a little late to react on it. And Jason actually does punch it forward. Rids needs to make contact. He does. There's an open net, but no one there to bang it through. Chaotic tries to catch it. No one's going to challenge him until Hassan finally comes through. LCT keeps it up in the air. He'll play it out of the corner. He's going to drop right into Jason's lap, but he doesn't play it off the wall. Instead, gives it to Rids. Rapupi is going to be the one who then goes for the clear. Hasmith will follow through, wins a nice 50, rids with the shot. He punches it forward, but LCT makes a nice save. He even been the touch, but Jazzin does head out to the side. Rapupi is there, though. They're going to take control of it, gets the pass red. He's going for the solo play. He doesn't need any teammates, and Jazzin, the ankles have been broken, and that's an easy goal for the Pupi right there. He just takes it up the field, takes down every single defender. I mean, I don't want to put too much blame on Hasmith. But he came flying like a bat out of hell, trying to get the dunk save right there. It just whipped completely. And then it kind of left Jazzed and Riz in panic mode, trying to stop something. But the play was too fast coming from Rapupi. And as a result, off of a kickoff now, it's two to zero. And things are going from bad to worse for anti-climax. Add to worse than this. How much worse can it get? Is one in here too off in the first minute of the game and anti-climax. They're just struggling now, one and eight, as I said, they're, they've came out to win now and they're ready to challenge anti climax as much as they can, that's exactly what they're doing. They came in and crushed them that last game and they're looking to do it again and not give anti climax any hope and... It's sad to see that anti climax as he did look so so good in his first game but it's slowly burning away and dying down. The, the start off of this game, you know, it's all yeah. slowly going away. I feel like by winning that second game, they've kind of awoken the sleeping dragon in this instance. And when any, they cleaned up their gameplay and they're looking much more like a team I could expect to see make a deeper run in this tournament. Not done yet though, there's still plenty of time and I do very much like Jazzin's play style and how he might be that individual playmaker. Something I've noticed, every time there's like someone who goes for like pretty sick plays, they're always on that panic. I don't know what it is about that car, but that's like, it's been growing more and more in popularity, it feels like, over these months and like over the past year. And it's always by people who make these stylish plays. So I don't know. I think I might have to pick up that Fennec moving forward. It just seems to be like a fun car to run as a bit of an offensive push right now for Anti Climax. It's stopped momentarily by Chaotic. And the two lot one any esports are on that point in the moment. This is looking like it could be their series, but. As they speak of that, they will move on to the semi-finals and get a bit of an update in results. Uga Booga, they just beat Block Girls in their match 3-2, to two, so they'll be heading to the semi-finals and they will face off against the winner of this one. Presumably looking like one any. And over on the other side, we have Weed M Dog versus TF Gaming. TF Gaming being our well, number one seed in the qualifiers, being number three seed in total, so there'll be some interesting semi-finals to see. But we're still in our game number one here. And and the climax, they do have time to come back. It's just looking more and more unlikely as the time ticks on. Yeah, I mean, the rotations just are not as clean from anti climax. I'm watching them throw three people into corners, throw them, you know, they try to react by going, all of them going to the other side. It's just like little communicational and rotational errors that are leaving them exposed. Fortunately, 1NE have kind of like pulled back on the gas a bit. They were trying to set up some of those pass plays with the exposed net, but LCT is always sitting a little bit too far back. I think he's playing a little too defensively. They could be panning the score higher, but as a result, you know, when you're not putting the pedal to the metal, sometimes opportunities can arise for the other team. Jazzin, great play past the defenders, and Hasmith is there to punch it in, and one goal difference with just under two minutes to go. Go ourselves a game here, one goal difference. Two minutes left. Can Anticlimax bring it back? Can they do it? I have hope in them, but it's going to be a difficult one here. If we can do it again, number five, what a statement that would be. Even if they lose it, that is some statement Anticlimax have made. I think they've already sort of made a statement, to be perfectly honest. I mean, they've kind of pushed one and I think, a bit harder than they were expecting at the start of this series. And Really, it's still close. Chaotic dropping back to Rapupi, who doesn't put the shot on target. Instead, takes it back to the corner as Rid and Jazzin actually double commit there. There's an open net, but no one from one end here there to push it. Instead, Jazzin's going to push it himself. Good save by Rapupi. Throws it to the safety of the corner. That's it. Ball's passed back to the middle. It's actually caught by LCT. Hasmith, he's racing back defensively. Rids gets there first, tries to clear a pass, but we're starting to see more pressure coming from this blue side. 
he gets a touch, but Vogel goes in favour of the one on each side of the FC, he's able to find it. Jazzin, though, a good flick, Chaotic gets the touch, but not the best, and it goes out midfield. The Pookie's out to get it. Hazy's up. Not the no! best touch, and that's going into his own net. Hazy, we talked about the climax of defence so, so much, and he's just doing that. Oh, Hazy, yeah, no. Or to make mistakes like that at this level. Granted, that is a hard save for 95, even probably 99% of the Rocket League fan base to make. But in situations like this with prize pools on the line, you've got to be able to punch that one to the corner. Unfortunately, Hasmith just doesn't get the angle he wants. And now, one minute remaining, two goal differential. Things are looking very good for 1NE. Great at the moment. If he gets a touch, he hits the ball high. Is he going to have to follow up? And... Chaotic now. The backboard, can he finish? So oh, Rez is able to find the save. Only 40 seconds left, and the climbers are two goals down. They need to find something, and they need to find something soon. They've got to bring this back, but the ball goes high. This could be the chance. Chaotic finds the save. Chaotic is going to try and hit it centre, but oh, the terrible touch. The ball goes up to Chaotic, and the time ticks down. It looks like it could be over, and the climax, I don't think they have enough time. Good play though, that's an open net, but Jazzin doesn't have the recovery to punch it in. Still 17 seconds, ball still there, thrown into the box. LCT gonna pop it up in the air, baby by some time. Rapupi, he needs to clear past mid pitch to secure the deal, but Jazz is there to challenge. Ducks it on one, half miss with a shot. It's two to three, seven seconds remaining. We're not done yet. Not done yet indeed, seven seconds left, one goal needed. If that kickoff goes a bit of anti-climax, we can be seeing a game number five on any. If they can just hold on, they will move to the semi-finals. But anti-climax, they're not going to make it easy. They're going to give it their all after this kickoff. And a yeah, win for I... Chaotic. It puts money in a good side. Oh my that gosh! No! It. <laughs> that is it! We're missing the defense. The one and you're going to take it and move to the, the semi-final. Oh, they went for a cheat play and it just disastrously did not work. Jazzin could not get back around in time and that should do it for 1NE. Uh, Rids, I mean, it. I feel bad saying this has been a constant problem, but his ghost, his trying to cheat on his teammates really punished this anti-climax side again and again and again. And at the end of the day, the big final play, it's a result of Rids just being too close behind poor Hasmith and that opened up the door for 1NE to get that game securing a goal at the end of all that chaotic. Fantastic performance in the series. If I were to name a man of the series, it would be him from 1NE as they do get the job done 3-1. to one. Cop and he was ready to take down at the climax. Even if it's the only need to do it himself, he did it. And with 1NE helping him, of course they're not going to win. But that is it. And the clients will be moving to the lower bracket and they'll be facing off against a block girls, but when I need they'll be moving at the same time to face off against Uga Booga, but that'll be our first match of the day. I think over next will be our semi-final of We Then Dog versus TF Games, so stick around, that'll be happening very, very soon. Yeah, that will be very shortly as you'll be sticking with us. I'm going to be taking a break. I'll be back for our third series, so don't go anywhere. We have more APL. We're going to do a little bit of a host switch up and hopefully improve that stream quality for all of you. So do not fret. We are going to make sure things run cleanly moving forward. And we do apologize greatly for that frame lag that you are experiencing. But we're going to fix the issue. So the stream might die, but we are not done. So please stay on the channel. When we come back online, we're going to keep on keeping on more APL, more Kedison Cup when we return.